be starting within a few seconds. We always, okay, it looks like the webinar is starting now. So we are always waiting for a few seconds uh, for everybody to connect at the beginning of the webinar. So we are really, really happy to be here with you this morning uh, for one new webinar uh, in which we will be discussing a very exciting topics, uh, the compatibility of a Canon Dapper's beam shaper with a carbide laser from uh, light conversion. So we will have the chance to be three presenting this uh, webinar uh, today. So myself, Gwen, I'm product line manager at uh, Kylabs, handling the laser material processing applications. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jean-François Poisson, and I am working as a sales engineer for light conversion, um, dedicated to sales for industrial lasers for France, Switzerland, and Belgium. And I would like to use this opportunity to thank all Kylab teams for the work great work they have done so far uh, using our carbide laser. And my name is David. I'm pre-sales engineer at K-Labs and I am very glad to show you today this uh, demonstration to show the compatibility of uh, the Canada Pulse module and the carbide lasers. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jean-François, and thanks for, for being here, actually. So the story behind this webinar is actually a, a good start uh, for the webinar. Uh, actually, we have we are working with femtosecond lasers for years uh, at K-Labs, but in order to uh, actually assemble our module and align them, we don't need to have a high power uh, femtosecond laser. We can use low power source. So we have used this laser at our partners and customers for years, but this is the very first time we have an actual high power femtosecond laser uh, at K-Labs in our labs. And this is the reason why this is the first time we have the opportunity to make such a webinar. So we are actually pretty excited to, uh, to show in life uh, the compatibility of both modules. And one more time, I want to thank Light Conversion for providing us uh, the laser. So today's webinar, uh, the agenda will be to discuss a bit about the Canon Apples module, explain you uh, uh, what is our company, our technology, and this module. Then uh, I will uh, let uh, Jean-François present uh, light conversion and the carbide laser. And then we will go to the most exciting part, uh, David's presentation, uh, live demonstration uh, uh, in the lab of the setup and the alignment uh, uh, as a start. And then about the performance in terms of uh, beam shaping at high power at uh, actually uh, 15 watts. And uh, 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 one feature of our Canon Depulse module, which is the uh, mode cleaning. We will conclude with uh, some process results uh, uh, that we have had uh, with both systems uh, in the past uh, in order to show you the capability of the systems. And uh, I will start then with uh, the Canon Depers Beam Shaper. A very short introduction about uh, Kylabs. Kylabs, actually, we are developing, manufacturing, and selling beam shaping systems. That's the basics uh, of what we are doing at Kylabs. And everything we are doing is actually based on a unique technology, which, it, which is called MPLC for multiplane light conversion. So we are more than 60 now uh, in uh, Rennes, in France. Uh, actually, I think we are even more than 70 uh, with all the interns uh, during the summer. What is MPLC? It's important to start by explaining the technology a bit. So multiplane light conversion is actually uh, uh, based on uh, multiplane, so a lot of different planes uh, uh, and a lot of different face plates with sufficient propagation in between. That's what you can see on the image uh, on the left. Uh, on the way, uh, we realized that doing it in a transmissive way, as you can see on the left, was not so convenient, and doing it in a reflective way, as you can see on the right, was actually much more convenient for many reasons. The first being, of course, that the system is much more compact. So currently, the light is going back and forward, two mirrors, one of them being textured with the faceplate. This system enables actually to have a very high control over both the intensity profile and the face profile. It is extremely important uh, to compare the technology, for example, with other competitive technology of beam shaping. It enables to do a very lot, uh, uh, a very broad range of shape, uh, nearly any shape that you want to do. It is passive, it is uh, reflective, so handling high power and high energy. And uh, moreover, uh, last but not least, we can handle multiple beam at the input and multiple beam at the output of the system, being a free space or fibered. The MPLC technology can apply to a lot of different uh, uh, applications. Uh, we have done a lot of telecommunication, including uh, free space 
communication for space communication actually uh, between the ground and satellite for the most exciting part uh, of it. We are also working on defense, on medical, but today we are here to discuss about laser material processing applications. So the idea is that uh, a lot of uh, actually uh, of, uh, of um, uh, system around you uh, at some point uh, are uh, actually meeting a laser when they are manufactured. It can be your watch, your cell phone, your TV, your phone, uh, and, and a plane. Uh, what we want to do at Kai Labs is that this very step, which is uh, actually using a laser, we want to improve it, either uh, improving the quality, either improving the yield. In order to do that, uh, we are working in two different worlds. The world of macroprocessing, which is based on high power CW laser, and the world of microprocessing, which is based on ultra soft pulse lasers. We have developed product for both, and actually they are uh, working on a lot of different applications. And we are very happy to say that uh, now in uh, 2022, we have actually worked on all those applications that you can see on the screen. I will shortly introduce uh, today's module, uh, the Canon Dapples module. So it's an off-the-shelf module uh, that you can uh, easily buy uh, from us. It is delivering actually four different shapes, a square top hat, a round top hat, a line top hat, or only a beam stabilization module, but we will get back to that uh, later on. It is working in IR and in the green wavelengths, and it's actually capable of handling up to 100 uh, microjoules in IR. So that's it actually for the presentation of Kylabs and of Canon Apples. So I will let uh, Jean-François carry on uh, with the presentation of light conversion. Thank you, Gwen. I will um, give you a few words about uh, our company light conversion for those uh, of you who still don't know who we are. So our company um, is based in Vilnius in Lithuania. Uh, the company was created in 1984, uh, 1994, sorry, as a spin-off of Vilnius uh, University. You can see uh, here a few figures. Um, sorry, you can see here a few figures from our company. We are today um, 400 employees. We started year 2022 with 350 employees. So it's quite um, a huge um, increase of people that are working with us. Uh, why so? It's because uh, we have uh, inaugurated, uh, starting uh, June 2022, an extension of our factory uh, that you can see here. So we, are, we have started with this uh, building built in 2014, which we have extended in 2018. And now we have um, all this space uh, dedicated to manufacture lasers, which represents uh, approximately 18,000 square meters. Uh, we also have increased um, and tripled the capacity of our green room by three times. So we have 2,000 square meters of green rooms now. Um, we have built in uh, 2021 uh, uh, roughly 550 lasers, and we plan to build already in 2022, uh, 25 more lasers than uh, the quantity we built in uh, 2021. Our goal as a midterm is to build uh, five lasers per day. We have a few subsidiaries around the world, some in US, some in Asia, as you can see here, China, Korea, and Japan. Each of these subsidiary is taking care of sales and service and is equip equipped with green rooms uh, which gives them the possibility to um, to service uh, the lasers locally in case um, it's needed. Uh, one of our catch sentences is a focus on femtoseconds. So this is what we do with our two um, main product ranges, which are Pharos and Carbide. Carbide is currently the laser that is set up in Kylabs and that they are using. Uh, we also build some uh, equipments that can be used around uh, the lasers to uh, tune the wavelengths, for example. Uh, as you can see here, we can have some quite complicated setups with, which can be um, uh, dedicated to quite specific uh, solutions. Um, Light conversion today addresses in the industry uh, many applications. So here you have a few examples. Uh, medical, for example, which is represented here by a stent cutting application. So we today equip um, most of the stent cutting um, machine manufacturers. 
also luxury goods. So our lasers are uh, used a lot in um, the watch uh, industry for some decoration applications, for example. Uh, semiconductor and consumer goods, uh, I would like to group these ones. Um, as an example, I would like to take um, uh, every, uh, every glass cutting application which is done on your smartphone um, may have uh, been uh, done with uh, light conversion lasers, laser as we have hundreds of uh, lasers here dedicated uh, to this application. Automotive as well. One main application so far is um, injector drilling, for example. So I would like to introduce you to um, two, product, two product ranges that we have. One is Pharos, the other one is Carbide. So the Pharos is a femtosecond uh, laser, which is very modular, um, robust and compact. We also like to say that it's a, this laser has a very broad range of tunable parameters, as you can see. You can use it from, so standard is 250 femtoseconds to 20 picoseconds. And uh, the Pharos range, we dedicate this one to development um, in two directions. One is to shorten the pulse duration. So we, are, uh, we have the possibility to propose a Pharos in a version which goes to uh, 100 uh, femtoseconds and even below as a pulse duration. Um, the maximum output power of the Pharos is 20 watts, and we are not working on increasing this um, average power on this product range. Maximum pulse energy is today 3 millijoules. We already have uh, something in the range of 4 millijoules to propose. All the Pharos laser can come in uh, NIR uh, wavelengths, 1030 nanometers, as well as double, tripled, uh, force harmonic and fifth harmonic. Uh, I, have seen I have said before that the Pharos is a quite uh, modular laser. As you can see here, you have uh, a Pharos view of the laser uh, completely uh, developed. So it's a uh, based on the oscillator, uh, regenerative amplifier, stretcher compressor, and a few high voltage um, power supplies, of course. All of our lasers come with a chiller, which can be, which can be water to air or water to water. We will talk now a little bit about the carbide. So why did I start by the Pharos? Because uh, carbide Carbide is nothing different than the Pharos, which has been built in a more compact way to address even more easily the industrial customers, the integrators. Um, it's a laser without maintenance, uh, which is very robust uh, for industrial applications and which can work 24-7 uh, without any, any problem. Here you can see two versions of the carbide. This one is CB3. It's a water-cooled laser. And we will see later that we have different power levels for this one. This one is called CB5. It's a completely air-cooled laser, uh, which can provide uh, up to 6 watts as average power with 100 uh, microjoules uh, energy per pulse. Here you can see uh, some specification, uh, a little bit more detailed uh, on the carbide. So as I told you, um, CB5 with 6 watts and uh, 100 microjoules. Um, carbide uh, CB3 uh, range, we propose in three, today in three different versions, 20 watts, 40 watts, and 80 watts. It's always a water-cooled laser, and uh, VC, uh, the carbide CB3 80 watt is currently the laser that uh, Kylabs is uh, using in their lab. 80 watt can come in uh, um, 800 microjoules or two millijoules version. Also important to note is that uh, either uh, Pharos or Carbide can be used with pulse duration in the nanosecond range. So in case uh, your application uh, needs uh, to use femtosecond uh, pulse duration and nanosecond, nanosecond pulse duration, uh, you need to know that uh, our femtoseconds can work in both uh, ranges. The carbide can come also uh, with a, what we call harmonics module uh, to give it the, to give the possibility to use different wavelengths. Here you have the body of the carbide 
um, in a more transparent uh, design. And here you can see that we have uh, attached to it a harmonic module. So this one is with uh, three uh, wavelengths, NIR, green, and UV. Um, with UV, we can achieve, uh, thanks to a very good uh, conversion efficiency. This is why, by the way, we are called light conversion. We are specialists also in that. Uh, UV, we can provide up to 30 watts. And uh, for industrial customers, it's important to know that um, the UV uh, crystal, which can be considered as a consumable, can be replaced either by the customer on the integrator without the need to remove the laser from the machine. So this corresponds, the UV crystal, to this small module that you have here. Um, one nice feature that we have uh, with our laser is what we call uh, bi-burst. Bi-burst uh, means uh, nothing dif different than burst in burst. So you, most of you may have heard about uh, using a femtosecond in a burst mode, which can be either gigahertz or megahertz. This is an example uh, that we have here. So megahertz means that uh, the main pulse that you create with your laser here is working in a conventional way, I would say, at 100 kilohertz. So you generate a pulse every 10 microseconds. If you work um, in a megahertz regime, you can create a train of sub pulses because sometimes the energy of your main pulse is too important from, for some micro machining application. And uh, this um, sub pulses will be divided by uh, some um, nanosecond pulse duration. You can also work uh, in the so called gigahertz regime where you will generate, again, a train of pulses. Here we have, as an example, two, and these pulses will be divided by um, some pulse duration in the range of few hundreds of picoseconds. And the specificity of bi-burst is to combine both regimes. You can, work, you can work in the same time in megahertz and gigahertz regime. And here you have an example of bi-burst, which combines both regimes. And the total energy of uh, all these pulses uh, corresponds to, uh, I mean, the sum of the energy, energy of all these pulses corresponds to the total energy of the original pulse. Very quickly, some application for, for the bi-burst. Um, a well-known one is uh, using bi-burst to, um, let's say, polish a metal surface to achieve a much better RA uh, once, um, for example, the uh, injection mold, mold has been built. Uh, here we can achieve some RAs uh, below 100 nanometers. Another application is used in uh, manufacturing of intraocular uh, lenses, where we use the laser in a conventional way to build the part, and we use a bi-burst to, let's say, polish uh, after uh, the polymer in order to achieve almost optical quality. Gwen? Hi, Jean-Francois. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I want to add two comments uh, on your presentation, actually. The first one is that actually two years MTBF is pretty impressive. And the second one is that we are, we are actually using your laser for about a, a month now. And the comment I had from the, the technical uh, department was that it was really easy to use. And uh, you just press a button, you change the wavelengths. That's actually a, a really cool feature. So OK, uh, I want to add one more thing that I forgot at the beginning of the webinar. We have actually uh, in the backstage uh, Julien and Clementine who are helping us with everything. And they are actually also helping you on the chat. So if you have any difficulty uh, with the sound or whatever, don't hesitate to ask a question. And if you have also some technical question, you can also ask them. We will answer them at the end of the webinar. OK, so now we will uh, reach the most exciting part of the webinar, uh, the live demonstration. So I will also uh, uh, give the mic and the camera to uh, Julien and David uh, for the demonstration of the setup and the alignment of the module. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, Gwen and Jean-Francois, for the presentation. And then we'll go to the experiment that we set up for this webinar. 
uh, at first we'll explain the setup that we will use uh, for this demonstration. So as you can see here, you will have the carbonizer from light conversion, and then we'll describe uh, the optical path. You will find just in this area uh, an attenuation system in order to be able to work at low and high power on the same setup. Here you can find the beam expander made of three lenses, which will adapt the size and the position of the beam waste at the input of the Canon the pulse module. Just over there, you can see a two injection mirror in order to set up the tilt and the shift and the input of the canon dapples. And at the output of the canon dapples, you can, you ha we, we have a, a mirror in order to uh, send the power on the calorimeter that we will use later in order to show you the transmission of the module. And then be behind this mirror, we have an imaging system made of uh, tele a relay telescope in order to see the shape. Uh, at the output of the canon dapples module, we're using a beam profiler. At first, I will to show you how it's easy to align uh, the Canon Dapples at low power. So, we'll switch on the camera and... Okay, here we are. And uh, as you, I think that you can see on the on the module uh, uh, this new feature that uh, we released a few months ago. We have on the size of the module two pine holes, which are dedicated to the pre-alignment of the module. As you can see, we do have the red spot just over there on the first pine hole, and the aim, the, the aim of uh, this pre-alignment is to align these two pine holes just over there in order to have the light at the output of the canoe. As you can see, we just have the red spot just over there, meaning that we are going through these two pine holes. And I will just now translate the module very easily in order to have the signal at the output of the module. Here we are. It's OK. And we already align the module. This is what is impressive with this new feature. I will, for now, go on a higher power. For this demonstration, we are going to use uh, five, 15, 15 watts and 10 microjoules in order to show you the compatibility on high power with the carbide. I will use the attenuation system and I will go on the higher power. As you can see uh, on the screen, we can see for now the shape, not, which is quite almost aligned. And we will for now measure the transmission of the module. You can see on the screen the power, the calorimeter, and you can see that we are for now around 12.6, 12.5, 12.6 watts at the input of the Canon Dapples module. So we do for now, I will switch off the laser, we'll remove the Canon Dapples module, and which will we'll show you the real power that we measure with this calorimeter. We and you can do at home. You can do the, tr the calculation on the transmission, and you will see that we will be above eighty percent. So I switch off the, the laser, just remove the Canon Dapples module. Let's go on the power, the laser, and you can see the power that we are measuring. So we are roughly 14.6 watts. And you can do the calculation. We are roughly between 84 and 86% transmission on the module, meaning that we have a very good laser quali beam quality at the input of the carbide. And we have this uh, easy alignment tool using the Canon Dapples module. That's that's great. Uh, it's a new feature that we have for a few months now, and I'm always impressed uh, how easy it is to align. Thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, all right, so we'll carry on with the demonstration, but we need to have some intermediate explanation about uh, what will uh, David show uh, just after uh, uh, my three slides uh, only. So one is about uh, the beam quality. So what is beam quality? If we give you a, a, a figure that you don't understand, it's uh, a bit uh, useless. So uh, we will uh, discuss about beam uniformity, and we saw that it was uh, nice to explain to you one more time this uh, ISO standard uh, criteria. So it is a very standard criteria that is actually available on most cameras to see how uniform a beam is. How does it work, actually? Uh, it is sampling over the whole beam, the intensity, 
uh, of each single points, and it is actually uh, making a histogram uh, of those data, and uh, then it's calculating how far you are from the average. So it's calculating the average, and then for each point, are you far or not from that average point? And if you are not, you get, uh, uh, you get uh, a point close to zero. If you are very far, you get a point close to one. So this the, uh, figure at the end is always between zero and one. And the closer you are to zero, the better the uniformity of the beam is. Then uh, another point that we want to explain is the uh, sharpness uh, of uh, the shape. Uh, actually, uh, it is very important to have a sharp top hat because uh, the sharper uh, the top hat, the further you are from a Gaussian beam and the, the better the process should be. But there are some limits to that. Uh, first of all, you have the limit uh, of the diffraction that we cannot beat. Uh, most of the time, the setup are actually limited uh, uh, in terms of numerical aperture, and it will actually uh, limit um, the transition length uh, of, uh, of uh, the, the shape. Then it also depends on your process. Uh, you may want to have a less or more sharp uh, top hat. And I want to say that uh, actually our uh, shapers are available at two different sharpness. So this module that today you will uh, see is having a 0 0.2 uh, sharpness, which means that the transition length uh, compared to the total plateau length is uh, five times uh, smaller. So just for uh, having a, a point of comparison, it is actually a uh, shape which is more than eight times sharper compared to a Gaussian beam. Then one last point that I want to explain, the mode cleaning feature. When, when you want to do uh, beam shaping, it doesn't matter the technology. All the technology are having the same uh, need of having an extremely stable output. Similarly, all the lasers are having the same, uh, I would say, uh, behavior, and they are not stable enough to have a very good beam shaping all the brands are the same. So we have developed this feature, which is called mode cleaning, that can be adapted to any femtosecond uh, laser that will actually uh, have an extremely stable output uh, in order to have, in a second step, a very good beam shaping. How does it work? It is actually definitely based on modes uh, because it's based on MPLC technology. The idea is that actually uh, when we see the input beam, we will divide its energy over the different modes uh, uh, possible. And each single mode will have a specific path inside the MPLC. So all the energy which is inside the TEM0, it means actually the Gaussian mode, they will follow one specific path inside the MPLC and get to the output and give you uh, the uh, shape that you want, uh, top at square, for example. All the energy which are due to ellipticity, defocus, astigmatism, tilt, or shift, they will be actually projected onto other modes and they will follow another path through the MPLC and at the end they will get uh, to another uh, uh, area uh, in space and it can be blocked, it can be dumped or it can be actually monitored if you want to see how much energy you are losing. So we will now have a live demonstration of the performance in terms of quality of the shaping and we will actually also have a, a demonstration of the mode cleaning feature done by David. So I hope you're ready, David. Is everything all right downstairs? Yeah, it's great. Uh, the mic is yours now. Thank you very much, Gwen. Uh, all is ready for the, this demonstration. Uh, so the first thing I wish to show you is uh, the data ray camera. And for that, I will go on the manipulation on the other side and let Julien switch on the camera. OK. It's okay for us. I think that you can see on the screen, uh, on your screen, you can see uh, the beam profiler uh, uh, software that we are using, and you can see uh, directly the shape that uh, we are discussing for now. As you can see, uh, the first thing is that we use a very small part of the detector, meaning that uh, if we do have any pointing instabilities or any uh, shift of the beam, you will see directly hit because you, you won't see anymore the shape at the output of the module. It's all the interest of this demonstration. So uh, the first thing is that you, we, we, can we can show you uh, with the, lots of detail the plateau uniformity that's when it's discarding. And you can see that we do have a, a quite well uniform top hat uh, with a very, very detailed uh, view on the on this uh, beam profiler, the, the plateau uniformity on this setup is below 0.2. Uh, the closer to zero, uh, the better we are. 
and um, as you, as Gwen uh, said, uh, and for now we are, will show you the stability of uh, the shape at the output of the canoe interpulse. And I think that you can also see that we are still at low, uh, at high power. Sorry, we still are. Uh, the 15 watts at the output of the laser. And for now, I will, you will see my hands on the screw and we'll for now try to tilt for, um, uh, at first. So we try to use this screw and I will slightly turn it. And as you can see, the demonstration is that we lost some transmission. The shape seems to be a lower on the, the transmission, on the, on the uh, power at the output, but I do, kind of quarter of a turn on the screw and we still have the shape at the input of the module and then we lose it. We just have to get back on the screw from quarter of turn and we'll go to the maximum transmission that we show at the beginning of the demonstration. We can do the same on the other axis, on the Y axis, and then you can see that we still have the shape and then roughly a quarter of a turn on the screw, we lost the shape. And then we do this quarter of a turn on this mirror and we get back to the maximum transmission. It's more than a quarter, it's between a quarter and a half of, of a turn on this, uh, on, this, uh, on this screw. Then we can do, for example, for example a shift uh, and we try to use both of the uh, screw on the two mirrors. And as you can see, we still have the shape, but the transmission is going lower and lower as far as shift the beam. And for now, we lose the shape. We just have to get back and try to refine this shape with the maximum transmission that uh, we show you at the beginning of the presentation with more than 12 watts. I think we just show you how stable is our Canon Dapper solution using this mode cleaning technology, using MPLC features, and then I just get back to Gwen to conclude on this live demonstration. That's great. Thank you very much, uh, David. Just want to mention that uh, the laser is actually uh, an 80 watt uh, laser, of course, uh, a standard reference from light conversion. But for safety reason, we've decided to make the light demonstration at 15 watt. Uh, 15 watt is representative of high power. So anyway, uh, it's really showing what you will get with your laser. And actually, many processes are done at uh, 18 uh, at um, 15 watts. Sorry, uh, but uh, but the truth is that uh, we have, of course, uh, try uh, the system at uh, 80 watt, and everything is working fine. So very shortly, uh, some uh, process results. It's not going to be long because it's not uh, today's topic. But just want to say uh, what we can do uh, with uh, first uh, our module and then uh, uh, the laser uh, from uh, Jean-François. Uh, so just uh, shortly to mention that uh, this system has been used with a lot of different partners all over the world. Uh, we have done some surface texturing, we have done some microfluidic chip welding, we have also done some actually nice triangular gutter uh, drilling. These were done with Alpha Nerve Lazea Seat uh, with a lot of different shape, a line shape, a U shape, a triangular shape. So it's very broad the range of things we can do. Uh, and in each case, we have demonstrated that there was a very good uh, improvement of the process. Uh, it, it can be on the speed uh, uh, multiplied by 20 with the line shape or by nine uh, with the U shape, or it, it can also be in terms of uh, precision of the drilling, which was increased by a factor of four compared to a Gaussian beam for the gutter drilling. So that's it for the Canon Pulse. I will let Jean-Francois present the results from the laser. Thanks, Gwen. Uh, yes, so here I wanted to show a few applications that are made in, a, let's say, conventional way, not with uh, using um, Canon Dapple so far, but uh, let's hope that in the future we will be able to work also with Canon Dapple on our side and to to manage to, 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 to make some nice applications in our application lab. So um, a few micro machining applications uh, that you can see here, like conical drilling or uh, precision spark cutting, part cuttings in metal here, for example. We also work a lot in um, the glass cutting applications. Uh, as I told you before, um, the most known one is uh, cutting of uh, glasses for smartphone or um, camera objectives for smartphones. 
um, stain cutting application, either uh, stainless steel or uh, titanium or nitinol uh, stains, uh, most of the times are cut using our uh, femtosecond lasers. We are working with a lot of uh, machine builders for this application. Also, we are able to achieve uh, high contrast marking. So here we show uh, an example of black and white marking, but also some color can be achieved. This is mainly used in decoration applications for watch industry, for example. So this is only a, a minor a part of the all the applications we worked on so far. And um, if you want to have an even better view of it, you can visit our website, lightcon.com, to see uh, all the applications we can propose. And in the near future, we will uh, show uh, some more applications again, um, even welding applications. Uh, Gwen? Yes, so David without the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, I wanted to go to the lab, but the truth is that the sound is not so good in the lab, so we decided that David will join in the meeting room for, for the end of the webinar. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Jean-François, for those results. Uh, we are now reaching the conclusion of the webinar, but uh, wait for the Q&A, uh, which is uh, following this, uh, this slide. Uh, we have demonstrated the full compatibility of the Canon Dapper Beam Shaper with the carbide laser. Thank you one more time to Light Conversion for, for providing us with uh, this very nice laser. So you have seen that the shaping is actually working at high power. The installation uh, and the alignment of the system is actually pretty simple. So it's very easy to, to use both systems together and the performance uh, are actually uh, all uh, maintained. So uh, the idea is that actually you can enhance, enhance your process performance by using a Canon Depers and a carbide laser. So don't hesitate to contact uh, uh, us, uh, Jean-François for the carbide laser, and uh, we will give you our, our emails also uh, for uh, K-Labs. Uh, we will be happy to give you uh, a lot more details on those systems. What next? Uh, as uh, Jean-François said, uh, we will uh, be really willing to uh, show in a few months uh, some process results uh, with both systems together. So uh, either it can be high tide conversion or uh, this is a good opportunity uh, to say that if any one of you is uh, willing to be the third partner for the process results, don't hesitate to contact us uh, as uh, well. So we will now reach the Q&A session. I guess that we have actually a lot of questions. Don't hesitate to keep asking questions. Uh, we will try to go through all of them uh, one by one. All right, so give me a second. OK, can the Canon Depulse be used for femtosecond UV laser uh, at uh, 15 watt? It's a, a very good question that uh, we always have. Uh, two years ago, we started to uh, uh, develop the module in IR, and we were very happy to have a good performance in IR. The second step was to develop a module in the green, because anyway, every time you are uh, decreasing the wavelengths, uh, you are increasing uh, the difficulty of uh, uh, manufacturing the system. We are happy that now we have a module in the green, and we are working on UV. I would say that we have some answers in UV, but not the Canon Dapples. So we could do a beam splitting, we could do better generation, we can do some shaping also uh, in its specific cases, but not the Canon Dapples for now. Next question, uh, I guess it's going to be for David if I'm not wrong. So when aligning the square topat module, what should be taken as a priority factor, optimizing the transmission or optimizing the square shape factor? Uh, I, I think uh, that you can use both of the methods. At first, when you're going on the low power using an attenuation, attenuation system for a wave, a quarter wave plate or and uh, and uh, polarizing uh, system, I think that the first thing that you have to optimize is the shape in order to be sure that you are on the right uh, part of the Canon Dapples module. Then uh, you can just use a calorimeter or a low power uh, power meter if you can attenuate the signal in order to optimize the transmission because as uh, you can see, uh, as Gwen show, showed you uh, during the presentation, the shape is quite uh, strongly linked to the mode cleaner system and the higher the transmission, the, the better the shape will be. Thank you, David. Uh, can Canon the pulse output variable spot size? It's a very good question. Actually, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, for now, it's not done inside the module. Uh, it means that uh, we will provide a shape with a fixed diameter. 
and we can either uh, help you in integrating a variable beam expander after the module or you can actually do it on your on yourself uh, because uh, a simple uh, beam expander can actually help you tuning uh, the spot size uh, actually maybe one day we will integrate it inside the module but uh, we have not done it uh, yet a question for jean-francois uh, is uh, your slide on burst by burst nanosecond operation schematics available for download would appreciate it uh, so it's not available for download, but I can easily share it uh, if we have uh, some contacts uh, following this webinar, of course. And ca I can also share uh, some uh, more details about the Bibers, something that I not mentioned. I did not mention, for example, the fact that uh, for each uh, sub pulse uh, that you generate, you can uh, program it as an increasing envelope, decreasing envelope, and flat envelope. Um, yes, I can share even more details. Uh, there is a small uh, short video on our website which uh, also explains the process. But uh, yes, of course, we are open to, to share this information. Thank you, Jean-Francois. Next question. What is the quality of the square beam captured by the beam analyzer during this live demo? Uh, I will let uh, David answer, but I still want to insist on the fact that I don't know if you realize it, but you, the optimization was done in like only the time I was talking, so like a minute. So of course, if you spend a, a bit more time, uh, you can have even a bit better uh, quality. Uh, the module that we used for the demonstration has a sh sharpness uh, of 0.2, uh, the, on the figure that uh, Gwen explained uh, during the webinar. And the flatness, the theoretical maximum flatness is 0.15. So we are close to the maximum uh, theoretical performance of this module, and then we can adapt uh, the different parameters uh, to, your, to your needs. Thank you, David. Which BIM profile software vendor are you using in this live demo? It's for you. Uh, uh, the BIM profiler that we are using is a data rec uh, camera uh, uh, with, the, I think, uh, the uh, it's 5.5 uh, micrometers per pixels, and uh, we are using the data ray uh, software, uh, which is linked to this kind of camera. Thank you. What is the beam size reduction factor from carbide exit to Canon module entrance? We used, uh, I think that we measured the, the, uh, the beam at the output of the carbide, which roughly, very roughly four millimeters, uh, just a, a bit less than uh, four millimeters in diameter at the beam waist. So we use a factor which is a bit less than four for the reduction of the beam for the input into the canon dapper module. So we use a quite standard. Uh, uh, lenses uh, to make a variable beam expander with three lenses. Thank you. What is the maximum distance from the output of the Canada module where the top hat shape can be achieved? Oh, this is a tough one. How the defocusing influences the top hat shape uh, when focusing lens for material processing is used? So what's the maximum distance from the output of the candle pool where the top hat shape can be achieved? Actually, it's a, it's a funny question because the actual top hat is formed a bit inside the module. For a lot of reasons, this is where we get the best performance. But anyway, when you are using it in the real world uh, for your processing, uh, you have to propagate that shape to your processing plane. And to do so, you need at least two lenses. One is your F theta lens, and the other one is an additional lens that uh, we will uh, advise you uh, based on uh, the size uh, you are looking for in the process plane. So in a way, uh, the question is not easy to answer because as I said, the shape is inside the module. Could we make it outside of the module? Uh, yes, uh, we could make it inside the module. For example, we could uh, already just uh, reimage it. It would be very simple. And in the past, we used to have shapes outside of the module. But as I said, uh, this is where you have the best performance. So how the defocusing influences the top hat shape when focusing lens for material processing is used. Uh, I'm not so sure to exactly understand that. Uh, we can answer on the defocusing part, I guess, for yeah. the mode cleaning. We, we do have uh, on the mode cleaner uh, module, uh, we do have this, uh, we take this in account. We can have a, a slight defocus of the beam waste at the input of the module and the, the output will remain stable at the cost of uh, some transmission into the module. 
then uh, we you, uh, you, uh, we can have com contact after this webinar. We can give you some advice uh, about uh, the equivalent of a depth of focus for this uh, topaz that we measured on a on a previous webinar that we realized a few months ago, and we compare the topaz uh, the Canon Dapples uh, topaz uh, to a DOE system, and we compare the defocus and uh, performance, in fact, on the stability of the top hat. And I think that uh, the results we obtain uh, will astonish you. Yeah, it was really great, especially compared to DOE, uh, which are not uh, stable at all. And uh, just to try to answer to the second part of the question, when focusing, uh, 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 when you are using a focusing lens, it's not changing much, but you have ratio, for example, the relay lens of a Gaussian beam is not the same depending on the size of the Gaussian beam. You have the same kind of rules for a top hat. So it means that uh, the, the depth of focus and the defocus uh, are all influenced by the magnification of all this. But basically, thanks to mode cleaning, anyway, uh, if the laser is defocusing, it is not defocusing at the output of the module and it will not defocus uh, in your processing plane. I hope this answers. And if not, don't hesitate to send us an email. Uh, can Canon Apples work with, a with following motorized beam expander, Galvo and FTTA lens? Uh, Galvo and FTT lens, this is what we are doing all the time. So yes, uh, motorized beam extender in principle, yes. But David, have we done it already? I don't know. Uh, I don't think that we use a motorized beam expander at the input of the Canon Dapples motor, but definitely we can do it uh, to, to make the, the beam uh, on the right size at the input of the Canon Dapples motor. Uh, it's not um, it, it's quite easy to do that. But uh, at the output, I don't think that any of our customer did this nope. for now. But if you have any results that you want to, to, to test this, so we will be uh, glad to help you to, to make the setup uh, to, 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 to this kind of application. The truth is that actually most of the beam expander we have met are manual. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, why, I guess the cost, <laughs> but uh, we are most, uh, we are yeah, used to a manual one. How critical the beam expander alignment to get a nice top at? Uh, you want to answer? Yeah. The, yeah, you, you're right. Uh, this is a, definitely a point on the alignment to, to make the disturb uh, We need to have the precise uh, beam waist size and position at the input of the of the Canon Dapples. But as we do have uh, this uh, mode cleaning feature in, at the input of the Canon Dapples, we can have a slight tolerance uh, on the, this uh, size and position of the beam waist. For example, uh, we to give you some figures, uh, we we can have plus uh, the position can be adjusted on plus or minus seven centimeters roughly uh, on, on the on the position of the beam waist and the input of the canon double without any major trouble on the on the top hat. Even if we are on the larger um, tolerance, then you will still have the top hat, but you will have a lack of transmission into the module. So that was the last question. So don't hesitate uh, to email us if you have more questions. Uh, you have here, here uh, my email, David's email, and, and Jean-François emails. Uh, we would be happy to answer. So I guess this is the time to say thank you all for your participation and all your questions. We hope that uh, you enjoyed the webinar. And, and uh, that's, that, that is for, uh, thank, thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Don't hesitate to contact us if you have any further question. Or we'll be glad to help you on, on this on this question. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice end of the day and have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.